tonight. From Raymond James Stadium in Texas. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And no run back on the opening kickoff. It will come out to the 25. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And they are led out there by their mobile quarterback. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. And they'll keep leaning on the running game back to the ground. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. So opening drive, three straight runs, unable to pick up the first. I know the fans want to see first downs, but guess what? The coaches have reasons for what they're doing. Sometimes they've scripted it, and some of these runs, while they haven't been successful now, they may be successful later on. Blake Gilligan on to punt here as he'll send this one away. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked out at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. So here the Bucks backed up to start their initial drive. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. So this is what we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. You know what the converse is, though? You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Now a handoff looking right. And he'll get inside the 10, but he's short of the line he needed. Five yards, and that means they come up short. 
As they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. They run a draw here on second down. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Okay, didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He is going to find Hill here. And he is going to have a Saints first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. down they'll go to the ground attack and now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage no gain on the play there second down as usual the hallmark of a good run defense linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage absolutely nowhere to run there They run a draw here on second down. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We're scoreless after one. The Saints with the football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The last run got six, now second and four. Oh, he's got a man wide open. 
incomplete. Touchdown, Saints. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Saints post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right, RAC? Run after catch, and he loves that, and he's going to carry that in at contract time. Lutz good on the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. So that drive in total eight plays. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. The huddle come up on second and eight at the 27 yard line. A quick throw there, going to be batted away and incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. And this one caught by Cameron Bray. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They'll try and run this one right up the gun. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Now this one complete on the slant route. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now they try the right side here. He'll take this to the 46. 
Well, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And good running, going to get this down close to a first at the Saints 39. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they've bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Now a handoff running through the middle. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. They'll look to throw here on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Escaping the pressure right. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. Down inside the 10. 23 yards on the play. That's a big league job there of getting out of the pocket, not panicking, and just buying himself some time. Then he made a good, accurate throw to set up first and goal. Chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. Try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And now what we have here, a third and goal. But it looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? This is caught. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime.
And now the Tampa Bay field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And his kick is indeed good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a conservative decision there, but it does put them on the board. And I know the players hate it and the coaches hate it, but sometimes you just got to take the points when they're there. Sometimes a field goal is pretty darn good. ready for the kickoff and here we go it's in the air from a yard or two deep here comes a return and out a little across the 25 to the 27 and the Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half and with a 7-3 lead we'll see how aggressive they want to be First down, he'll drop to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, so much for getting separation. No chance there. Locked down tight, forcing the incompletion on that attempt. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. And he comes back with one complete. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Johnson's got it complete. And they're going to get this up to midfield. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle, it doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. He had the distance, but it's no good. Wide to the right, and this will stay a four-point game. two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up with great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Second and four. Looking left side, he's got it complete. 
Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will do it for this first half. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. But they're ready for the second half, and we are too as we'll kick it right back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. through two quarters as we get rolling here in this second half. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result, and he opted for the touchback. And the Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. This is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 39. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll look to throw here. Dancing to his left. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. The goal is certainly to try and make a big play happen and climb back into this game, but you have to be careful. If you overdo it, you could turn it over and hurt your team. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. They'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. He'll let 
let this go for the end zone. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great play there. 37 yards. And the Buccaneers have taken the lead here in this third quarter. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. And, of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You could see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And, boy, it was pretty. Todd Bowles leaving his offense on the field. They're going to go for two here. They'll try and throw for it. And this will be caught as they convert here for two. He hits the big target for the two-point try. Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. ready for the kickoff and here we go it's in the air this taken in at the goal line and no alley to be found the coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18. now the attention turns to the saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half Come out throwing here on first down. Johnson with a completion over the middle. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Four yards remain for second down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. five on this play to move the sticks out of the gun now on third down and down he goes a bucket air sack he couldn't get away there on third down the pressure too much and he sacked for a loss of 12. this rookie was already being tested as he tries to lead a comeback here in the second half now he's got to get some momentum back after that sack and a big loss. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But 
Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game. And with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll make it only to the 43, a gain of two. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. 56 to Mike, boys, 56. On third down, they'll try and run for it on the draw. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 60 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. First down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. They run a draw here on second down, and he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time, it's third and three. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. It won't be by much. He needed three, and he got three, barely. But the mark shows first down. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Their mobile quarterback, 36 yards. And the Buccaneers have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. So an electrifying run there as he calls his own number and takes it all the way. Brings a new dynamic to this offense, doesn't he? And right now I'm picturing the offensive coordinator, the head coach in their minds, drawing up some more running plays for this guy because he brings some excitement to this offense. And just a young rookie, a lot of electricity yet to come in this career. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 21-7. So this drive spans seven plays. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown.
The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. The Saints coming out now to take the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. He'll drop to throw. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. He'll look to throw. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be fourth down. He got out of bounds, that's a good thing, but still short of the first. And now, since this brings up fourth down, the defensive play caller, grab your nerves, because now you don't want to be so amped up that you give them a first down by getting out of your lanes, but you also don't want to just lay back and let them have it easily. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there, and for the offense, they're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Back to throw now on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. If he's their best threat on offense, use your number one cover guy on defense. It doesn't matter about size. They have had him locked up. That just his first catch of the game. Big reason why they're down. Three yards remain for second down. Now back to throw. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Here we go, set, 33, yellow. They'll look to throw now on first down. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Working with second and five now. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And we'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven. 
That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. They'll set up to throw. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds. And obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Important extra point up and through. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded inside the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Hands it off out of the gun. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play.
Here's a give up the middle. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. time and that should just about do it. Well you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire Charles but a clean one too. No turnovers in this contest. I think you're exactly right about that. To me this is just